power concedes nothing without demand, wrote Frederick Douglass, the famed abolitionist. This is the story of ordinary people making demands for the power to improve their communities and govern their lives. Are you ready for the resurrection of your community? Are you ready? It's what John Dewey called the democracy is a way of life. That's the way of life, participating in public action. This type of public action is rooted in the philosophy of Saul Alinsky, who championed new ways of organizing the poor and the powerless that created a backyard revolution in cities across America. His work influenced the struggle for civil rights, the farm workers' movement, and even the very nature of political protest. In 1970, Time magazine hailed Alinsky as a prophet of power to the people and argue that Alinsky's ideas had forever changed the way American democracy worked. I wasn't politically involved. I'm just a, a family person, a regular guy. But I believe, uh, working with this organization, that we could be heroes too. Normal people, common people that go to work every day, we could be heroes in our communities, and we have to take that role. But taking that role has not been the common experience in America. Our recent political experience has been citizen apathy, low voter turnout, what some political commentators describe as the crisis in American democracy. You cannot go anywhere in America, rich neighborhood, poor neighborhood, in between neighborhoods, and not have a conversation about the failure of politics. This is an almost universal sense that something is deeply wrong in American democracy. But can faith in American democracy be restored? For the Industrial Areas Foundation, the process begins one-on-one. -on -one. People begin, uh, and democracy begins, really, in conversations. People have to realize the only thing you get something in this country is if you work for it. People sitting in a church basement or around a kitchen table or in a union hall or wherever they choose to gather, and talking about their perceptions of public life and this society and what they might do about it if they had power. People do mobilize, but they mobilize around issues that are of importance to them. And once you give them that push, then they get up off their tough and they do what's necessary. The mayor is expected to be here. We're all anxious. We're pleased to hear that. But uh, like always, we're in the last minute. We never know how that's going to turn out. We always hold politicians accountable, so he will be confronted with the questions that we're concerned with, uh, the building of Nehemiah Homes in Western Pennsylvania and Spring Creek. Brothers and sisters, the mayor of New York City, Mr. Rudolph Giuliani. Good afternoon, thank you very much. Uh, last week, I was very, very pleased to meet with representatives of the East Brooklyn congregations. And I'm very, also very pleased to say that we are ensuring funding for the Nehemiah Housing Initiative west of Pennsylvania Avenue. And because we recognize the East Brooklyn Nehemiah Initiative as one of the very, very finest low-cost housing initiatives in the city of New York, we're going to make sure that there's enough funding in the budget so that uh, Spring Creek can begin, so that it can begin on time, and so that it won't be interrupted. Today we was asking him to personally present himself in order that our people would know that he, the mayor, was behind this. We feel victorious. This is about people like me that would never have been afforded an opportunity for home ownership had it not been for EBC. And those of you that are going to own these homes, listen to this, the belief that the answers to all your problems after you get your homes are in your hands and in your minds to solve. That's what this is about. This didn't start with the city of New York uh, supporting you. You made the city of New York support you because you were right in what you were doing and forcing others to notice because of the good work that you're doing. <laughs> Finally, stay as come. I want to go pick me up some of that dirt. 
You go back to the 1980s, and most of the political establishment in this city opposed them, tried to undercut them, and didn't want to make it happen. Why this was is the a, political opposition so fierce? Because, there's, because uh, in many ways, um, they do not... Um, they do not pay homage to political figures. When you come to their meetings, they require you to speak in three minutes, and they close you off and shut you off if you don't speak in three minutes. They require you to answer their questions, and uh, they remind you that you are a public servant. And... Power concedes nothing without demand. It's as true today as when Frederick Douglass wrote about it and Saul Alinsky organized for it. When a people have hope, when they have power, they have a future, they have they know where they're going, and they know they're going to keep getting more as they get more and more power. They know how to do it now. They know how to function as citizens in a democratic process. Without organized people, you're going to really have uh, communities that are just going nowhere. It's the people. That's the key. The people. That's the key. Organized.